So, oh yes, I think we're live now. Um, so tonight we have an extraordinarily special treat, uh, but first let me introduce myself. I am Margaret Dillaway, world famous children's book author. If you are a librarian, you're probably like pretty excited right now. Or if you're an elementary school teacher of children grades four through six, you might also be very excited to see me, Margaret Dillaway, award-winning children's book author and author of some women's fiction books, also some award-winning, actually, I've won a lot of awards recently. Anyways, I am here tonight to work on a brand new genre for me, and that is urban legend. That's right, tonight, you, the audience, are going to help me write an improvised urban legend tale, the likes of which have never been seen before on this planet or on any other planet in any universe anywhere. <laughs> Sound good? Now, I was thinking about urban legend and you have things like Slender Man or uh, whatever, like, what is that thing called? Creepy pasta thing Creepy has pasta. a lot of creepy pasta has a lot of urban legend kinds of things on there. Um, but I was thinking about recent urban legends and how they came about. And yes, I am talking a little bit to give people time to get into the room. Say hi in the chat when you get in here so I know you're here, please. Um, and then I can see your I can't see your beautiful faces, but I will see your uh, beautiful screen handle names. Um, let me see here. Come on, chat. My chat is not loading. We've got, our, uh, we've got four K saying hello. We've got one three five B seven saying chupacabra. Yes. We've oh, here. <laughs> yeah. You got it? Yeah. Parsipani? Yeah. I see Simon saying, hey. And that's in parentheses, and I don't know what that means, but I'm going to say it like, hey, because I think that's how Simon, Simon Gisler is saying it. So, hey, back to you, <laughs> Simon. <laughs> um, yeah, I was thinking about urban legends. There was a, there was a post on my next door, um, next door being uh, like, local area Twitter where people post cranky things to each other. But this lady said that she was at 7-Eleven and there was a boot in the parking lot, a lone boot all by itself. And she thought that it was a sign that a human trafficking thing was about to take place. <laughs> um, my question is, if you were going to human traffic or like enact a kidnapping right then, why would you uh, put a signal out there? Um, but anyway, she was of the firm belief that this was a thing that was going to happen and it was a warning or or something. So there are urban legends like that. Um, also like the, the boots or shoes thrown over, the telephone wires, all kinds, all kinds of urban legends going on. Um, if you are in the chat right now, can you please tell me where you're from, because I want to see that. And we are also testing this out because tonight you are going to have to do a lot of work because unbeknownst to everyone else, authors actually do not write their own books. We just go on Twitch and get people to help us write them. So instead of me writing a whole book all by myself, like a normal, uh, like amateurish author would, I'm going to be like a professional and get other people to do it for me. So um, I'm going to have to ask you a lot of questions. You're going to have to give a lot of input. You're going to have to help me make these characters do things. And they're going to be things that characters do not want to do. Because you know what Walt Disney said? Well, he said a lot of things. But <laughs> one of the things he said was, when your character starts having it good, you, you have to um, stick a knife in, well, he didn't stick a knife, but you know, you have to make things harder for them. He, he might've said stick a knife. He might've been a secretly dark person. I don't know. Did you, and that's another urban legend is that Walt Disney's like head is frozen somewhere so they can resuscitate him one day. Have you heard that legend before? 
I um, definitely heard that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in the chat right now, um, the first thing we need to do is come up with a super rad book title. And to do that, I'm going to need three initials from you all. Um, they don't have to be your own initials. They can be your grandma's initials. They can be your kid's initials. They can be your dog's initials if your dog has a middle name. J A N X Y Z D H P M G T Razor Cream. Um, Jenny Fresh K J H. All right, we're getting lots of initials coming up here. Um, and I'm going to need three of my performers slash puppets, as we like to call them on the show, to come on camera and help me think of a title. And by help, I mean entirely think of it by yourself while I sit here and, you know, talk about it. So could we have Molly, um, Jess, and Rafi, come on camera, please. Woo! Yeah. I'm going to pick the initials NPH, like Neil Patrick Harris. Uh -oh. um, and from these initials, dear puppets, I want you to come up with a title that has to do with an urban legend story. Um, I'm going to give you a second to think about it, and then I will call on one of you. Let's see, let's see, let's see. They all look very nervous, very nervous indeed. Um, let's see, uh, Molly, you look the most nervous, so I'm going to okay. call on you first. All right. Um, no one peaks here. Ooh, <laughs> no one peaks here. All right. And you mean peak like like, peak, not like peak, like you peak. <laughs> the no first one. one, no one peak. Okay. I mean, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> the first okay. one. Peep it. Okay. No one peeps, peeps, peeks here. Rafi. My Margaret, I've got a terrifying tale for you tonight. Oh, let me hear it. What, what was my P word? I, I believe it was Nicholas. Picked hell. <gasps> Nicholas picks hell. Whoa, that's the most interesting choice. <laughs> okay, um, let's let's hear what Jess has to say. Mine's very similar to Molly's, um, and I've been trying to figure out a new one, and I feel like I'm going to give myself a nosebleed, so I'm just going to say it. Okay. Um, also, because I low-key think that everyone should pick Ralphie's. Um, no puppies here. No puppies here. <laughs> no puppies here. You put a comma in it if you're like, no puppies here. No. If you want it. Puppies here. You could put two commas in it and then it would be no puppies here. No puppies. No puppies here. here. Something I've said to my puppy. <laughs> and now I am going to need you to vote for your favorite. So please write it in the chat. Do you want no one peeks here? Um, Nicholas picks hell or no puppies here. Somebody has very accurately said no puppies sounds like hell. Like that's true. Yeah, yeah that's real good. I couldn't. Two, three, there's so many votes coming in. One, two. I see a lot of puppy votes. Wait, wait, lots of Nicholas. One, two, three. I would four. like to use this voting time to apologize to Jess for plugging my computer in while she was uh, <laughs> describing her title. <laughs> okay, I, it's okay. <laughs> no, fight, 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 fight. All no. right, it looks like. <laughs> unless unless someone has a different count because I didn't scroll up enough, it looks like um um, um, um someone Definitely said that was rude, Rafi. Was that is your mom watching this? 
I don't <laughs> think so, actually. I hope so. Hi, Mom, if you are. <laughs> um, uh, looks like Nicholas picks Hal. Yeah. Is the winner? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. And even if not, that's what I picked. So, I mm -hmm. guess. Well, I mean, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Let's see. We're going to see Nicholas picking Hal right here in a second. So, can we have Molly and Jess? Oh, I forgot to mention the puppet who whose title wins um, gets to be the main character. The main puppet. The main source of my amusement for that evening. Okay, Rafi, going to help me write a really good novel that's going to be on the New York Times bestseller list, win the Pulitzer Prize, and the Nobel Peace Prize for Literature. Okay? And chemistry. And chemistry, yes. We're going to come up with some new chemistry while we're at it, maybe some physics, too. 100%. All right. Change our DNA right now. Okay. So... We have Nicholas Pixel, and so we see Nicholas Nicholas Spartbottom, a reckless 19-year-old college student from Arizona, living the high life in Tucson, just going to his classes going to the cookie shop next door where he is right now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and ordering a round of gourmet cookies anytime he wants because his parents gave him a credit card. <laughs> now, Nicholas's life is about to change in a really dramatic way in a way that he is not going to be able to get out of because it seems that Nicholas is going to pick hell, but I don't know how. Let's find out. Oh, yes, my good man. I will have the red velvet. Nicholas? Yes. My name is Doreen. You come in here every day and call me my good man. Oh, yes. And I get it. It's an affectation of vernacular. But you have misgendered me for the last time, sir. Why, my good man, I've done it again. It's okay. It's how we learn to change these habits. Maybe if I gave you some positive reinforcement, New well, choice. Maybe if I gave you some hot coffee in the face. New choice. This would maybe if I baked myself into a cake and you ate me, you would understand my plight. Ooh. Why do you mean in like a cannibalistic sense or more in like a magical sense? You know what? I can't choose. I, I, it was more like a retort, like, eat me. Oh, like, this was, this was a metaphor. Okay, I, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Audience, audience, do you want this to be a metaphor, though? Do we really want it to be a metaphor? Or do we want to see Doreen get eaten, either rhetorically, I'm going to give you three choices, rhetorically, <laughs> magically, or cannibalistically? What which way does do they mean here? <laughs> oh Lord God. Literally. Oh, it's literal. Oh, Doreen, God. you've gotten yourself into it. You know what? Is that your parents' credit card? Oh yes. Ah, yes, thank you. I'm going to run it first. You paid for this. There you go. All right. Um, you said red velvet, right? I did. Okay. The, um, I'm going to look this way for a moment and let you do whatever it is you're doing to that cookie. I assume it is ready. Wonderful. 
Nicholas bit into the cookie and then something else happened. Something, audience, what happened next? Does Nicholas have some kind of revelation where he stops going to the cookie shop next door and starts being a good student? Or is he plunged into hell? <gasps> plunged into hell naturally. And that's that's where we're gonna leave it off at uh, the end of chapter one. It got exciting really fast because Doreen made an offer of making herself into a red velvet cookie that was then consumed by Nicholas. And of course, <laughs> consuming things like that never ends well, does it? Hmm. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see what's happening in chapter two. Um, to bring in a couple of side characters, audience, um, do we want to see a couple of uh, like demons in hell, or do we want to see um, Nicholas's parents or something else? If you have a more creative idea, the devil, demons. Demons. Yeah, I know you want to see devils. I know. I kind of set that up. I set it up so you want to pick that. <laughs> oh. um, but I also said you could pick something else if you wanted to. So open. Right. Um, anyway, so let's let's pick a, a background for this. Um, so are the demons are we gonna see the demons in like um, a deserty landscape, like a like a Utah Red Rock kind of situation, or do you want to see them in um, a clothing store, like an all white like all white wall clothing store with somebody who looks like David Rose um, putting away clothes. <laughs> Boutique. Okay, yeah. So um, we're going to have a couple of demons in a clothing store. That's going to be the background for the next scene, chapter two. You'll have to speak up, darling. Can I just say, you look devilishly delightful. <sighs> you, you, are oh, you are so bad. Practically evil. <laughs> <laughs> These demons were named Beatrice and Cletus. And they had descended ignominiously from heaven the previous week. You know what? I love Cletus that uh, your hair did not get messed up at all in that fall. Oh, Beatrice, I would never let this hair get messed up. And if I do say so, oh. I know I'm not allowed to speak very often, but I, I would like to stress that it is the ninth day that we are spending on Earth, and that is eight days too many. We must redescend. Oh, that's <sighs> insane. Come on, come on. If I'm not fully outfitted from the gap, uh, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere until my wardrobe is complete. I cannot stress that enough. I know the two of you have taken quite a liking to worthy ways, but really, I must insist I cannot take another lashing. We must go. <sighs> this demon was named Lazarus Mellencamp, and Lazarus Mellencamp was a brown nosing demon, the worst kind of demon known to the imagination, always needing to please the master, who could never actually be pleased. Listen here, smelling camp. <laughs> We're trying to have a good time. Yeah. But Lazarus. Like, what demon follows the rules? Hello, we're demons. We're supposed to be rebellious. Lazarus, I would like you to sing a song 
about your predicament, your dilemma, your little life story right now. I want to hear your point of view, but uh, portrayed in song, if you would. Nobody listens to smelling camp. I mean melon camp. Nobody listens to me. Why won't they listen? Mother and father won't listen. Why won't they listen to me? I'm just trying to be my best self, trying to put trophies on the shelf. I'm just trying to be the best that I can. So please, won't you listen to me? Yay. Lazarus, you always had your head in the clouds when it should have been down underground. Mm -hmm. Of course you'd pick now smell and camp to break into the music industry. We're trying to shop. Well, we spent all all of the week walking all around planet Earth and you let me spend 30 seconds on Broadway. I feel cheated, so we must descend. Always an agenda, smelling camp, always um, an agenda. Audience, what will happen if they don't descend as Lazarus wants them to? Will they be trapped in the gap forever or will they get in a lot of uh, trouble with their boss, which means that they would might be <laughs> trapped in a, a hell-like gap forever. What what do you think, audience? What should happen to them if they're if they don't descend soon? What are the stakes here? That's what I need to know. That's what writers always ask. Trouble with the boss. They're going to be in lots of trouble with the boss if they don't descend. And the boss is probably going to do something real bad to them. Yeah. I mean, aren't you scared? Of what? Yeah. What's the big man going to do? Oh, I told you. <sighs> no. Uh -huh. <sighs> hey, hey, boss. Good to see you here. Did you? Were you gonna get some khakis too? Cause they're on sale. Yeah, sixty percent off. Pretty good deal. Not bad. Um, oh God, he's, he's giving us a silent treatment and that's, that's never good. No, it's never good. No, that's a silent treatment. The hellish vapors, the hellish vapors have overtaken his voice. I know. And then when he gets ranting, it's really hard to hear him. Like, We're going to end chapter two right there. The boss ranting and raving incoherently like he's just been muted by those rascally demons. Demons are by nature rascally. Um, so I hear. Did you know there's a book that tells you all the demon names and all of everything? And I don't know who wrote it or anything. Somebody told me about it the other day. So I thought that was interesting. Um, let's see. Let's see in chapter three. Um, we're going to go see what's going on with Nicholas, who has chosen hell and has descended into hell, which is going to be. Um, let's see. Do we want to see Nicholas again in the red rock desert which kind of looks like the uh regular depiction of hell or is hell going to be more or are we going to see nicholas in a cockpit 
of a plane like he's on the way to hell. So we want to see cockpit or um, desert. Red rocks. Hell plane. Cockpit, cockpit. Y'all voting? Get your vote in there. Yes. All right. If I'm looking down, I'm looking at the chat, obviously. Okay. So chapter three is going to take place in the cockpit of a plane where we meet up with Nicholas and another character who is shepherding him to his final destination. It was really kind of you to let me into the cockpit. <laughs> yeah, man. Don't worry about it. Ah, uh, so tell me, uh, please, uh, what do I owe you? Um, fifty bucks. What was that? Fifty bucks. I'm so sorry, my grave man. You got it? It was a pun. Oh, God, I'm so stressed out. I couldn't make out what you said. Nicholas Fartbottom just handed over his all his credit cards. Every <sighs> single last one his parents gave him. They were going to be really mad, especially about the Chevron card. But he did it anyway. Now, audience, I was wondering something. What What is Nicholas's um, mental state right now? Do you think he's worried or he's, is he such a player that he is not worried right now that he's descending into hell because he ate a cannibalistic cookie? Take his soul. Is he worried? He's unnervingly. Yes, he is unnervingly chill. Is he panicking inside? So he's being chill, but he's really panicking inside, especially when... Out of nowhere, we see his secret crush, Penelope, Penelope Barretts, come into the cockpit. The girl he's been crushing on since kindergarten has suddenly appeared before him. Penelope Barretts. I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. I was just like in my home and then all of a sudden my fingers started to tingle and my my body started to vaporize and now I'm in a plane with the guy I, from my statistics class. Oh my God, you remembered. I believe we are going to hell because I ate a cookie. Wait, sorry, what now? Well, that's why I'm going to hell. I don't know why you're going to hell. No, I don't know either. Did you summon me? Did you? Audience, why is Penelope going to hell? Did Nicholas somehow accidentally summon her? Or did was Penelope bad? Was she a bad girl <laughs> in some way? Um, let's pick away. I'll pick away once you, if, once you tell me that choice. Summoned. Hell is for children. OK, 135B7. I don't know what that means. Um, made a deal with devil, going to hell during a cookie, due to a cookie, Penelope's bad, bad. All right, so Penelope did something bad. Um, she ate too many pieces of Hawaiian pineapple pizza when she wasn't supposed to. I mean, I'm, I'm not a bad person. I'm like, you know, sometimes um, they can, you can either just order by the slice or you can just get a pie and it's like $3 more just to get a whole pizza. So I don't know whether it's, it could be between that or the fact that I've actively like disowned my entire family and embezzled a ton of money, but it's definitely the pizza. Oh God, Nic it's Nicholas, right? It's Nicholas. It's Nicholas oh, Robert. God. I'm not, I'm not a bad person. I'm not. What I what always do, do is I get a few slices and some breadsticks, and that way if I'm still hungry, I can eat the breadsticks. 
oh, I just, I'm, I'm so sorry. I've been ignoring you all semester. I feel like, I feel like you obviously have good advice. How, how did you end up here? I ate a cookie with human meat. Okay, come on now. Be serious. Like how, like, how did you, how did you end up here? I uh, was, I, I misgendered somebody and then I ate a cookie with human meat. Right, okay, that feels like the fullest story. Okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm not lying. This is real. No, no, I, I, no, I, I, now that you've given me more information, I, I understand that sounds, is, that, that sounds about hell worthy to me. Audience, right. is, is Penelope shocked by this or is she only marginally shocked and should we hear this in song because i i think penelope has a lovely singing voice and <laughs> we wanted to hear her sing again is she shocked or not shocked or not no she's not shocked at all she's marginally shocked in the song can we hear you be marginally shocked in a, a song about this please well I suppose of all the bad things you could do, you could step on a shoe, you could fly to the moon, of all the bad things you could do, I guess this is not the worst things that you could do. If you were a child stealing money from your mother's purse, that's still not the worst thing you can do. If I were to confess the worst things that I did, I think that we would be here for a while. If I were to confess the worst things that I did, maybe, maybe I should be here. But because we're both here, we're both bad peers, we can be bad together. Mildly bad or dreadfully bad in whatever the weather. Just stay with me and I won't be the worst one here. If you stay with me, stay with me, then we can be bad. All year. Yay. I don't know if there are years here. I don't know whether, like, uh, it's still like the Gregorian calendar. You seem to have more information about this than I do. I, I really don't. To be honest, I just kind of assumed we were in hell because of a talking grave and that we're on a plane. It's, it's, that makes it's kind sense, of a lot. But, we, but it's nice so to know it's not just me. Oh, I'm sorry. Me too. No, I, I was. That, I'll, I'll stay with you and I'll, I'll support you through this. I'm, I, I don't think you're a bad guy. I don't think that that's the worst thing that you can do, but I, I'll stay and I'll support you. Audience, do you think that Nicholas should confess his feelings right now or should he keep them secret still? Confess or secret? Confess or secret? Yeah. Well, this is split. Wait. Two, three, four. No. Um, Nicholas, you do in fact have to profess your love at this very second, but we're going to do it in the next chapter when we come back to you. <gasps> so that's the end of chapter three. Oh my heavens. Oh, my author hairs are standing on end because I can barely take this excitement. So we've got Nicholas and Je and uh, Penelope falling in love before our very eyes on the worst day of their entire lives with the worst thing that could possibly ever happen to them being plunged into the depths of hell. Um, now I want to go back and see in chapter four, perhaps what these um, these demons are now up to. Um, audience, did they go ahead and go back to the bowels of hell or are they still at the gap? Can you tell me please? Because it will affect the background that they have to use. Are they at the gap or do they go to hell? Gap, gap. 
They can't stay away from the gap. They're still at the gap. The demons are at the gap. All right, let's uh, let's sink into chapter four and find out what's happening with these demons. See, this pea coat fits you perfectly. You're so right. I think wool is my fabric. You don't you don't think it'll yeah. be when we go back, do you? I think it'll be perfect. I think the sweater you are, Beatrice, the better. That's a really good point. You know, you know what I picked up here? Oh, I found the best idea to torture them. Okay. Oh, yeah? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply foundation that's way too dark for their skin and they're gonna get a really uh -huh. bad orange line and then everyone's gonna laugh. <gasps> it's the best torture I've come up with yet. They're gonna look like they are confused and that's gonna be embarrassing. Embarrassment is the greatest torture for humans. Yeah, yeah, that sting lasts a lifetime. I think I think it's almost more effective than the whippings. I really do. I really yeah, do. the lashings, well, they are certainly fun to apply to uh, little Lazarus though, isn't it? Oh, oh uh, I, that is fun. But you know, I think I'm getting a little bit of tennis elbow from it. I can't. Oh, really here, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me get that for you. Uh, Cletus and Beatrice, can you please talk about the lashings in uh, a Shakespearean, duet of sorts mm. not a song just back and forth forsooth the the beating uh your, tongue your we have is quite unwieldy so i think although my joints doth grow weak i feel i must stay true to my calling of whipping and whipping doth. For ye doth I tell ye to be good? <laughs> Nay. <laughs> Nay. Lo, lo, and behold, our dedication to yon thine, our craft, for it is mighty and weighty and eternal as just, I'm just then nicholas and penelope fell straight into the gap fall into the gap oh. right now. Penelope. nicholas nicholas did you make it yes oh man that plane just dumped us out man are you okay yeah, it actually wasn't as painful as I would expect for hell. I mean, it hurt, but oh. like, yeah. Hello. Hello. Sorry, Dee. Dee. Hello, Penelope and Nicholas. Oh, We've yeah. been expecting you. Pause for our evil laughter. Oh, it, it was infectious. I just felt like. <laughs> We are all knowing, for we have power that is demonic and mighty. And uh, <laughs> they, they they write it on this chart here. We, we know when you guys are coming. So. It, it's sort of like the pearly gates, uh, but it's opposite because so we. Yeah. Pearly. We have swirly, wrought iron. It's a little more, ah, you know. Uh, kind of exactly. in your face. <laughs> yeah. Is, is this it then? Is, is, is the gap literally hell? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, because I don't have my credit cards and I can't buy anything. No, no, because I'm going to put you in a pastel polo shirt with khakis. You're going to look ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna, we're not going to give you a belt. <laughs> oh, but, but I can have the things. Well, Nicholas, I want to hear how you feel about this spoken in Shatner, Shatner time. I love things. Demons are giving me things. This seems wonderful. I mean, they're going to like put me in them for a bit, which I, but then I can have them. 
Audience, is this actually Nicholas's idea of heaven or is it hell? Is it heaven for him? If he can just have things anyway? Yes. Shatner does have an enduring seat in this program. Oh, he made it into it then. Uh, no, it's hell. It is hell. Nick is vibing. He's a minimalist. Denim jacket hell. He doesn't care. Oh, but how can we make him care, audience? What can what stakes can we give him? Let's see. Let's see. Do you have any ideas? Why is why is Nicholas gonna care that he's in hell? Because Penelope's there. Penelope, he has to confess his love to Penelope, and then he's gotta try to save Penelope from the hell, because this is her hell. Penelope. I must tell you something. What? I want to tell you this. Since our statistics presentation, I love you, Penelope. Last name. Oh, God. Hey, boss. Yes, well, we well, got uh, two new arrivals here, Penelope, Nicholas, then uh, we're going to torture them. We're going to start out with the uh, khakis and then move on to the mismatched foundation. Yeah, standard stuff. Why do I sense love? Oh. Wow. <laughs> this one was doing a thing. A whole love confession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. like on and on. Yeah. You know who. Well, I had barely started. <laughs> there's more? Yes. No, there's not going to be more. I don't care if there is more. This is hell. <laughs> See? Our love is literally silencing you. Oh. You've got him in the zone again. That, 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 that's what happens to him. He gets enraged and it's this white hot heat and then it just kind of comes out. It, 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 you I did it. feel like I might need to buy a new computer, but just understand that love is not allowed in hell. Take care of this now. All right. Thanks, boss. Okay. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, you, you really sure about this, Nicholas? You're really into Penelope? And Penelope? Yes, I'm sure. Listen, I, I got her. Like this guy? I got a rap sheet right here. You want to hear? Help me with this, Cleta. Oh, no, you don't, you don't need to read. Like, we don't need to list all the bad things I've done. Well, he's, a, he's, already, he's already said he loves me, so it's, um, you know, no, it's a real no take back situation. It's. Penelope, have you heard of informed consent? Are you trying to rob him of that? Much like you robbed milk money from Tommy Flanders in the first grade? Nicholas, I was oh. a different person. I was a literal child. Tommy Flanders was a child too. Yeah, a child with no milk, thanks to Penelope. It's, it, it, I was so young. I, Nicholas, please, I'm a, I'm a good person now. No, I understand. So. Audience, should the demons try to cut a deal with Nicholas to save Penelope, or should they just send them both down into the sixth level of hell, which in Buddhism is where the devils live, if you didn't know that? Audience, they do, the devils do love deals. I think they, uh, yeah. We're at the gap. Yeah. These devils, they need to make a deal with these two. And Nicholas is going to have to give up some stuff. Devils, I would like to make a deal with you. Oh. What do you think this is? The price is right? All right. Yeah. Scott. If you if you save Penelope, I'll give you some of my stuff. Oh, new choice. New choice, Nicholas. If you save Penelope... I will give you 
I'll give you all of my cash. You've already taken my credit cards, but I'll give you my cash. New choice, Nicholas. If you save Penelope, I'll stay here in hell. There it is. All right. So I gotta. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sweeten that deal, and uh, I'm gonna say that that's gonna work for me. But uh, from here on out, all the clothes we give you, they're not gonna be the Gap. They're gonna be Old Navy. <gasps> oh, that's not. You can't possibly. Penelope, you're getting out of here. You know, going back up to Earth. Don't Use have to stay at the gap any longer. Mm -hmm. Audience, is Penelope going to take the deal or is she going to stay with Nicholas and wear Old Navy for the rest of eternity? They don't even sell my size. <laughs> is Penelope staying? They're going back to Earth. Uh, she doesn't love him <coughs> back. Take the deal. Leave, Penelope. Yeah, get out. Everyone's telling you to get out. Get out. <laughs> Take the deal, Penelope. Nicholas, you you're the man of my dreams. But I'll leave you here with these ill-fitting jeans. And that's the worst thing that I did. <gasps> Oh man, we got some mid '90s denim cargo jeans with your name on it. <gasps> and that, uh, audience, is the legend of when Nicholas chose Hal. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! I got I got chills up and down my spine. I wrote this all down word for word, and it's all going to an expanded book that will be available in 2023. Um, let's, let's thank all of our, our puppets and have them introduce themselves. Uh, let's start with Brenna. I don't know if my mic is going to work. I've been having a very bad show and I've been sad and all of my puppets had no voices, but everything's fine. Hi. <laughs> the puppets were very emotive though. <laughs> you silenced my love. A wonderful job. <laughs> and uh, Jess. Hi, I'm Jess O'Neill. If you can't think of a tune, just speak, sing a little bit. Yay. Uh, Aunt Rafi, I almost called you Nicholas Farfadam. <laughs> I'd be fine with that. My name is Rafi. Uh, these jeans. I'm wearing right now actually are eight sizes too big and if we had gone on a little bit longer I would have done this with my camera and shown this oh but it doesn't work with the background come on <laughs> you would have seen how much they don't fit <laughs> I don't know if we need to see that on Twitch uh <laughs> Molly yes I'm Molly Sharp uh <laughs> not actually Cletus but I fooled you that time yes you did and Elizabeth <laughs> I'm Elizabeth Softly, and I am actually a demon. So thanks for having me. Yes, yes, this was a <laughs> typecasting stunt for Elizabeth. Um, thank you all for coming to our show this week. And if you can, please donate Venmo to the Pack Theater. Um, this is how they're staying afloat with all these wonderful shows on Twitch, which allow all of us from different areas of the world, Jess is in the UK actually, um, to get together and have some fun with you. So thank you so much for coming everyone. Um, we're gonna sign off now. Good night. <laughs>